Hey friends, Garrow here, and today I'm hanging out on Innisfree Farm with one of my favorite digestive herbs. This is meadowsweet, the queen of the meadow, and it's been helping people for hundreds of years, from the hedgerows in Europe and Asia, naturalized here to North America. This is one of the best herbs when it comes to working with our digestion and more. So join me in learning about Philopendula almeria. Ah, oh, I just love how meadow sweet smells. I mean, maybe that's part of the name, meadow sweet. It is a sweet smelling flower, but it does have a lot of medicinal benefits. And before we kind of get into any of that, I want to make sure you know you got the right herb because this is one that is naturalized here in North America and is wild all through other parts of the world, especially through Europe. Like I said, it's been used for hundreds of years and it has some good folklore to it. And we'll get into that too. But first off, let's make sure that we've got the right plant. One of the easiest ways to recognize meadowsweet is in mid-July when it blooms and it has these really dainty interwoven flowers. They're quite delicate and they look very similar to elderflower. You can tell by the smell though, there's a nice perfume to them that's quite different from elderflower and quite distinctly looking different as a plant. Now you can also see that this plant has a really nice kind of red hue to the stems and actually the root too, if you dig up the root has a red hue to it. That's one way to tell, but really probably the most distinct feature of this plant when it's not in flower is its leaves. It has a unique type of leaf. It has a trifolate, which means three leaflets along the top leaf, and then it comes into these really small leaves, all opposite, going down to big ones, to small ones, to big ones, to small ones, to big ones, down the main leaf stem. This is an easy identifier because there aren't very many plants that have big leaves to small leaves to big leaves to small leaves, just like that. The other thing to note is that it's usually around four feet tall. These ones are six feet tall, but it's usually that way. It'll be intermixed in meadows where there's really moist nutrient rich soil it likes a bit of wet feet we're on the edge of the meadow here and you can tell by the landscape around me that there's a lot of water in this part of the land so this is an ideal place for it to grow hence why they planted it here at Innisfree now Chanchel Cabrera who owns this farm she uses this heavily as medicine this is one of her favorite plants for digestion it's one of mine as well hence a big hedgerow of meadowsweet I mentioned that meadowsweet is a powerful medicine, but it's also a favorite herb for peace and love and connection. This is a druidic herb that was used in a lot of love spells and love potions. It is also known as queen of the meadow, which really, if you look back at the history and the rich use of this in the Celtic tradition, it was a bride's flower. It was one that was used in ceremony for this kind of coming uh, to connection, to bringing peace and love. But you know, it has an interesting way, if I twist that into understanding how it might be used as medicine, we see that it also is a harmonizer for the digestive tract. This is my go-to herb for a lot of digestive issues, especially things like GERDs, acid reflux, digestive heartburn, this type of thing. Meadowsweet has the capacity to really lower that hyper acidity, but it's also a dual directional herb. So it's a smart herb. For those people who have low acidity, it'll help bring it up. For those that have high acidity, it'll bring it down. Beyond heartburn, Meadowsweet has a lot of other uses for the digestive system. Specifically with the stomach, this has been studied heavily for its ability to support healing stomach ulcers and gastritis and all kinds of things like this. In fact, it's really good for working with H. pylori imbalances. It has some antimicrobial effects in that way, so it can be useful for all kinds of issues within the digestive system. It's also quite astringent and so has this ability to really tighten the tissues and tone the stomach lining as well as the whole digestive tract. So great for things like diarrhea, uh, giardia and dysentery, but really where it shines is in that astringent toning the tissues and creating a better ecology for the right types of microbiome to show up. The astringent qualities of meadowsweet also make it very anti-inflammatory. So not just toning the mucosal membrane of the digestive tract, but also working with things like rheumatism and arthritis. Really great for joint health and for any kind of aches and pains in this way. In fact, one of the aspects of it that's probably the most famous of all is its content of salicylic acid. This is very similar to willow bark and is what aspirin is derived from. 
you know, the original aspirin actually came from meadowsweet. This was the first herb that it was found in, and it's probably the most concentrated form of salicylic acid is in the roots of this plant. So much of the old world manufacturing of aspirin, I think even back into the 1800s when it was first discovered, was from working with meadowsweet. But the difference is, is that aspirin can actually cause stomach ulcers and cause other issues in the body, whereas Meadowsweet really helps to alleviate those. So for pain, for inflammation, for digestive health, for ulcers, for this type of thing, some of the things you might turn to aspirin for, Meadowsweet might be the right herb. Like many herbs with a rich history, this is one of those plants that had been used as a panacea herb. It had a lot of different effects. So it wasn't just for physical health, but it was also for spiritual protection. And in the medieval age, this was one of those ones that helped with epilepsy or was used that way in order to really work with people who had some kind of spiritual takeover. The queen of the meadow would come in and support grounding them and bringing them back into their body and helping work through some of those types of issues. The astringency and toning effect and antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory effects of this herb make it really useful for things like chronic cough as well as things like urinary tract infections. Again, that panacea comes into play here where working with this kind of herb is gonna help to tone the whole body. So whatever imbalance or area of imbalance we might have, Metasweet can be useful for guiding the body back to its best health. As you can see, this herb can really help you be more healthy. The bees love this plant. Well, they love any flower, really. Let's get that clear. But this is one that has those immune enhancing qualities. Uh, even the German Commission E had studied this heavily for its ability to support coughs and colds, work with sweating and fever, and all these things it's been approved for as a medicine. In Europe, this herb is used quite a lot in a lot of different types of remedies. Probably though, again, going back to digestion, I think this is the root of our health, and this is where Meadowsweet really, really shines. So yes, it's good for inflammation. Yes, it's good for arthritis. It even can be used on the skin for things like pimples and as a wash that way to really heal uh, inflamed skin. It can be used in the body in many ways, but it's the digestion that is the seat of our health, and this is where Meadowsweet really shines. Like many members of the rose family, Philippendula almeria, I just, I just love saying that, almeria has a lot of rich chemistry to it and the diversity of spectrum. A recent study actually showed that there are some new flavonoid glycosides that they've just found in this plant. I think they're called almeriocides, similar to the almeria, because that's where they're found. These have an immunomodulating property and Many flavonoid glycosides have this kind of effect. They're also quite antioxidant, but these in particular have shown to inhibit overgrowth of T cells and really just modulate the immune system when it's going haywire. This is super useful in the modern age because we have a lot of out of balance immunological health, as you can see around you by the cascade of autoimmune diseases. The flavonoid glycosides are just one aspect of this plant, the salicylic acid another, there are a variety of other antioxidant compounds and just really rich bouquet of chemistry. The smell is divine, the taste is astringent and yet has a really flavorful floral taste. I love putting this in all my tea blends, it's one of my favorite digestive herbs not just because of the effects because it actually tastes good. So it goes great with things like ginger and peppermint or other kind of digestive things like fennel or cardamom or you name it. So really I would turn to Meadowsweet and I would look for it in your wildlands or grow it in your garden as a great way to support your digestive health, to support your inflammation and you know all the rest. Anyway, let's get into a bit of harvesting, how we'd want to do this, what we would do with this plant. So I'm going to pick a few. I love these flowers for their smell, but also that is a really useful part of the medicine. So while they're in flower right now, I'm just going to harvest some of these flowers as they make just a delicious tea. At home, I might garble off the stems and just take the flower parts, dry those out and add them to my tea, but I also use a lot of the leaves. So Typically when it comes to leaf harvesting, you want to do that before the plant goes to flower because the chi or the energy is in the flower, but with this one, you harvest it all at the same time. It's the whole plant. It's just the stems don't, even though the stems do have a lot of medicine in them, they're not as medicinal as the leaves in the flowers or the root is. So at this time of year, I'm going to harvest the leaves like so. 
I'm just gonna pick all these young leaves off. If you see, in this case, it's some parts are past flower, so I'll grab one of these bigger, older leaves, just for an example. When they start to brown a little bit, this leaf easily browns quickly. That's kind of when it's getting past its prime. So as long as the leaves are fresh and tender and young, they're gonna make a great medicine tea. These, when I get home, I might pick out a bit of the midrib if I'm feeling like it's too woody and just take the little leaflets. But I'll really, I'll just be drying all this out and adding it to my tea blends. I prefer to keep these leaves whole and then chop them up when I'm going to use them. Due to the chemistry in this plant, Meadowsweet or Philopendula almeria loves to be made into a tincture. So this is another great way to work with this plant. You can either make a 40% alcohol tincture of a dried herb or go all the way up to 70% my version is pack the jar as full as you can and put in your alcohol. Shake it up a few times, pour it out. That's your layman's tincture. And of course, if you're a pro herb nerd, you know how to make a good tincture. But this is just another herb you can add to your tinctured medicines as well as your tea medicines. As the root is some of the most potent medicine, has the highest concentration of salicylic acid, we're gonna wanna dig up some of this root to make it a medicine. So before I do though, I just want to say thank you, Metasweet. You are an amazing plant. I appreciate you. And thanks for joining us in this journey to share your medicine with people. This is one of those great plants. We're going to take your life today, but you got a whole abundant array of your family. So to dig a root, we want to make sure we don't break it up, right? We want to just try to get in there beside the root. It's got a nice thick root, so... All right, here we go. All right, yeah, I'm gonna pull off this top. All right, take my knife, just kind of clean off. It's got all these little rootlets. Again, that reddish hue that we see in the tops is also found in the roots. So I'm just gonna clean these off, scrape them back. You can see a little bit of that reddish hue. This makes a great tasting tea. It's also the most therapeutic when it comes to working with pain and any of these medicines you might use aspirin for. So I might dig up some of these roots and slice them thinly, dehydrate these once they're cleaned up, and use them as a good first aid medicine. This is a great aspirin alternative. So it can be used as a strong decoction or as an infusion as a tea or just chewed on to really get that salicylic acid out. And again, just want to reiterate that this is so much better for the body, or at least easier on the digestive system, easier on the balance of the body than taking things like aspirin. So it just is a great alternative for those of you who have pain, inflammation, and are working with medicines like that. As you can see, this is quite the cluster of roots in this section. So I'm gonna take a few of these roots home to plant in our garden, but what we'll do is we'll divide them and get them into these small little rootlets and plant them out and see how well they adopt to our kind of more wet, moist, meadowy type soil. I'm just tickled to get out today and connect in with the queen of the meadow. This is a regal herb that has a lot to give us, a lot to offer the body. It's also an abundant wild plant that grows through the hedgerows in Europe and Asia and is naturalized here in North America. It's easy to cultivate and it's something that you can start to bring into your repertoire, into your apothecary, into your herbal medicine practice. So I hope you get out and connect with Meadowsweet. And if you already are working with this plant, let us know in the comments, let us know as a community of herbalists, how you like to work with Meadowsweet. What's been your experience with it? And is this a herb that you work with on a regular basis? All right, thanks for joining me. I hope you got a lot out of this video and we will see you next time. I just want to give a quick shout out to Chanchel Cabrera and Innisfree Farms. This is one of the best herbal teaching farms on Vancouver Island with a great variety of plants, medicinal gardens, and so much more. They do a weekend service in the summer where you can come here and get tea and explore the farm and get a little bit of that therapeutic benefit. So if you're ever on Vancouver Island in Royston in the weekend on the summer, come check out Innisfree.